Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Seed Story Cup number three here by Take TV. And now we switch number guy out for Ikop joining me here at the caster's desk. Yeah, obviously a much needed upgrade, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, you, can, you can't get better than Ikop for sure on the casting desk. No, so after this game, when Ikop uh, leaves the caster desk uh, again, you can just switch off the stream because it, it can't get better. No, it will get better in terms of games, though, because that's what we are here to see. We're not here to see the casters, we're here to see the awesome players. And we, what kind of players do we have for you right now? Exactly. It's crazy what's coming up. It's a Swedish match here. It's the match between Kungen and Sho. So some very great players here. We have already seen in the same group before Faramir beating the current world champion. He was beating Firebat. And I'm very excited to see the match now between Kungen and Sho. Yeah, definitely. Both those players uh, have something to prove here in Seed Story Cup. Uh, show up to until recently did not have any tournament success whatsoever. However, now uh, coming off fresh off victory, uh, winning the Xfinity tournament that happened just recently. Kung, on the other hand, he's just kind of a wild card, I would say. Uh, he never really was into Hearthstone in the first place uh, that much. He was invited into a couple of tournaments here and there. Um, but uh, always good for some upsets. Uh, for example, at WCA at China, um, the, probably the last tournament he actually attended, uh, he managed to upset uh, Reynard. Uh, eliminating him out of the tournament and making him very, very salty. <laughs> yeah, that happens so often to Reynard. Making Reynard salty is something that, well, happens quite often. Yeah. But I totally agree to you. It's going to be very interesting to see a show, as you said, not those many major achievements, but definitely he is one of the pro players. He's really established a name for himself. And Kungen as well. Also, we can't really know what he's going to bring to the table and how he's going to play that out, but I'm sure both players will give their best and will deliver some great Hearthstone. Yeah, the advantage that Kungen has uh, over show is that it's very hard to prepare, actually prepare for Kungen. Uh, Kungen obviously not as... Uh, as much of a visible Hearthstone player as uh, Sho is. Sho is like streaming 24-7, even passing out sometimes. <laughs> Your souls shall be mine. And there we are, jumping into the first game, and we see the Warlock mirror match here, but actually it's uh, maybe not some mirror match, because Sho is playing his handlock, as it looks, with the Mountain Giant, and Kungen, on the other hand, we already see the white color indicating it is a demon lock here. So, maybe, Tiena Tiena, there's a version with Mountain Giants and still some Marganis and void color and stuff. But I don't really like that, and I have not seen too many pro players play it. Yeah, it is um, kind of. I, I, I guess it's just a different uh, call to just go for the void color hand lock. Uh, it's a little bit more clunky, even so. Um, it's um, it might be a little bit too slow for um, a, met, a met meta game dominated by aggressive decks like Magmage and uh, Face Hunter. But um, if the game goes long, it definitely pays off. <laughs> I totally agree to that, but we are going to see if it pays off. Well, we have the big Game Hunter already in the hand here for Cook, and so if we see that Mountain Giant come on turn 4, we have an immediate answer here for Kung in, and it is lining up pretty well. He also live taps. There's no reason for him to play the Ruby and Egg right now. And he just uh, gathers some cards. He maybe knows that he's going up against a handlock. I don't know how good he prepared against Sho, but uh, as you were already saying, he's dreaming a lot and he gives some intel on what he might be preparing, on what he might bring to the tournament. So Kung in may be in the better spot here to read his opponent. Yeah, definitely. Uh, of course, uh, Sho still doesn't know what Kungen might actually bring to the table, so that might also um, like have an impact on what uh, how how Sho will actually play this out in the f first couple of turns until he sees some more cards. Uh, but in general, I would say Kungen definitely has an uphill battle here. Uh, whenever I was testing this matchup, the handlock was uh, usually favored. I played this deck that Kungen is playing right now a lot, and uh, usually the handlock comes out on top. Uh, it, um, Kungen does have the big game hunter though, so that is uh, really an important factor here to give him an edge. Yeah, that's a very crucial card and like that he can establish a, a board for himself. The next thing that he should opt for uh, is to draw into a demon because you want your white color to die and get some value out of that. So if you could get a Maganis here, but he even goes for the power overwhelming. So losing that white color right here, he keeps his big game hunter. Goes for the Mortal Coil, draws another card. Hmm. That is a definitely a very odd play and uh, definitely a play I would not make. 
who knows if um, Sho even has a second, I mean eventually he will have a second target for the BGH, but it's, I, I think it's just better to uh, get this BGH out early, also to apply some pressure on the board. I totally agree to that, but Kungen maybe has another plan here. He knows his deck may be best, maybe he switched something in the deck list, we don't know yet. For now it looks pretty standard, as I would say, but well, Kungen went for that play, he keeps the big game hunter, he values that very high as it looks. And now I'm... What, what do we expect this turn? You could go for the implosion, even though it is never gonna kill the Sludge Bowser. You could also play the Nerubian Egg and just... How many hand cards does he have? Two, four, six, eight, nine cards. So you could play the... You could draw a card and then play the Egg. Probably that's the best thing to do here. Getting some, some other options in your hand. Yeah, I can't help but feel... But notice that Kungen just made a misplay there, a terrible misplay actually, because the uh, Big Game Hunter is, uh, I mean the Big, uh, the big Game Hunter uh, just would have put much more pressure on the board. He had the option as well to draw into a demon eventually for the Void Caller, um, and the Power of Overwhelming is a really good card to just get through taunters uh, very effectively as well. Exactly, I totally agree with you there, playing that Big Game Hunter there also. What was he playing around by not playing it? What doesn't help you if you keep it until the end of the game? Maybe he was just expecting his power volume to not be uh, able to be used like that effectively, but I don't know, it was just a misplay basically. I, it, it is okay, I mean, Kung doesn't play a lot, uh, you can't... It, it's, it, it, it's kind of expected, honestly, <laughs> that he makes some mistakes. <laughs> oh, it's very mean to say that. Yeah, but it's, but it's true, let's be honest. Well, for now it seems like it's true, yes. Uh, Totally, and what do you do this turn? You you could go for for the lucky Bloodmade Thalnos here. You could try to get the implosion hitting for five, or maybe just take out that zombie chow, or also go for Lothab. Yeah, Lothab seems very decent here, especially uh, because it gives him a good minion on board that can trade into the Belcher easily. Right now, Kungen does not face any pressure, so he doesn't need to remove the um, show's board r just yet. If uh, Show chooses to ignore that low tap, um, there might be a pretty decent Shadow Flame next turn. He could also answer that low tap with his own low tap. That's also something you can always do. It could draw another card because right now, uh, if I did count that right, he just has nine cards in his hand. So Show could definitely go for his low tap here. I don't even see another play here. You go for Lothab, you can maybe use the Iron Big Owl on your opponent's Nerubian Egg if you want to. Oh, or on the Ancient Watcher, yeah, I forgot about that. And he's putting on a lot of pressure like that. Yeah, and rightfully so. Look at the burst waiting in uh, Show's hand. He has Ragnaros and also he has a lot of burn with... Um, exactly, double, double Hellfire, hellfire and, and a Dark, dark bomb. bomb. That's right. So Show definitely in a uh, commanding position here, but right now we will see that uh, Kungen will have a... Actually, no, he will not, because of obviously because of the low tap uh, debuff. So Shadow Flame is not an option here, unfortunately. What we could see is that I guess he will just attack you bot up and hope for the best. Yeah, he has to. He has to heal up here. You could think about silencing something on the board. Maybe if you want to heal up a bit more, you could. Silence the Sludge Belcher, play your own NTQ bot and run into the Zombie Chow. I guess that's the safest, safest way to play it out. There's also the option of... yeah, I, I, to, The play that prevents the most damage here is Iron Beak Owling the Sludge Belcher and then uh, yeah, paving the way for the low tap to attack into the low tap or even the Zombie Chow actually. That yeah, or, you could, or you could trade into the Ancient Watcher, also leaving your Lothab on the board, maybe trading into another minion. But we also see the, the Hellfire in Show's hand, so that is going to come in very handy. And yeah, Kungen decides to trade that Ancient Watcher away, leaving his Lothab on the board. But we also see a Mortal Coil here for Show, so that might be very useful here. But let's calculate now. We got... 12 damage on the board and a possible 6 damage coming in, so that's 18, so he's 2 off lethal. So, what do you do now? Yeah, right now uh, Sho has no way of actually finishing his opponent, not even Rag does that uh, if it hits the face. So, um, 
Shoulder's trying to increase his options first, applying that mortal coil to that low tap. Wow, and, and he draws the, perfect, the Doctor Boom. Yeah, this is the perfect draw for him that's right now. That's exactly, that's such a top deck here. Well played, Joe. Drawing into that Doctor Boom, very nice here. And yeah, you drop it on turn 7, it comes in very handy here, and then trade your uh, Sludge Belcher and probably your Zombie Chow into your opponent's owl, swing to the face for 7 damage, bringing down Kung and his 13 HP, and now he's on the line again. However, now we see that uh, mm -hmm. Kung does have some pretty decent board clear here, I would say, with uh, um, Big M Hunter targeting the uh, Dr. Boom. Uh, but you can buff your big game hunter with a sergeant and then have a shadow flame that even kills the low zap away. Exactly. You could also think about using the hellfire in a way. You could use the hellfire in combination with the abuse of sergeant first, but well, then you just have a 4 1 Nerubian on the board. That does not seem too nice. So I guess the shadow flame play looks really slick, uh, looks really slick to me. Yeah, it also keeps um, the Nerubi neck around um, that can get hit by the boom bots. So many possibilities. Exactly, soaking up some damage for him here. Uh, I definitely agree to that play, and I don't see another good option here for now him. Now the only question is, does Kungen see that good play? That's exactly the question I'm, think I'm thinking about it right now, uh, because as we have seen, Kungen sometimes plays it a bit awkwardly, and maybe he also fancies the Hellfire. Maybe he will trade his abusive sergeant, well, buff up the Nerubian egg, run into the lower theft, then use the Hellfire, and finally the big game hunter on the Dr. Boom. Oh. There we go, but I have to agree, and the Nerubian dies, so he gets punished for that play. Yeah, indeed. And now this turn, I would, well, no, we don't have lethal here, so I would just go for YOLO rag. But the rag doesn't even do that much here. Well, if is you there, hit is face, there, is you there bring your other option. I guess there I guess not really. What else are you going to do here? So uh. You can either take out your opponent's minion and have Ragnaros on the board so something for for your opponent to deal with or you hit face and bring your opponent into lethal range. Yeah, show just going for it cuz he wants Rag to hit face here and he he gets, he gets it. gets it. Yeah. It's perfect. Very nice here. On the other hand, Kungen has the anti-Q bot and is there a way for him to take... Well, he, you can take Ragnaros out, buffing your big game hunter and then Bane of Doom. But you also want to heal up and... Yeah, Kongen really needs to heal up here. There's obviously no guarantee that you can get uh, a Melganis, but even if he gets Melganis, then... Uh, then you die, big game, you die hunter, big game hunter, Doctor yeah. Boombot. Dr. Boombot. <laughs> Dr. Bomb. Dr. Bomb, what is wrong? Dark Bomb! There Dr. we go. Dr. Bomb. <laughs> Dr. Bomb, that's very nice. Yeah, Dr. Bomb coming in by the Warlock here uh, would be lethal, so you have to heal up. That's your only chance to survive, and then maybe... If you use that 5 mana for that anti q bot, is there a way to take out... Wow, you can go for a lucky swing. Right. It doesn't even matter what he hits, because with the abuse of Sergeant, then... No, you're down to 5 mana already. Oh, he had to hit for four here. Yeah, right now Kongen is probably gonna ignore this Ragnaros, and it's okay to do it in theory because uh, <laughs> because the um, yeah you have a lot of targets that can get hit by the Rag, but yeah. obviously there is the Hellfire that is gonna close out the game. Three damage to the face, all the minions are gone, so that's the way for Rag to finish off the game. Show taking the lead in the Warlock Mirror over Kongen, one zero in favor of Show. Exactly. Show is leading right now here. 1-0 over Kungen. The Warlock is out for Show. Kungen still left with his three options. He has a Kungen has a Warlock, a Hunter and a Druid left. Show on the other hand has a Druid and a Warrior left. So it's going to be interesting how the rest of the games will pay uh, will uh, go out. But uh, we saw Kungen making some mistakes or not maybe doing the perfect play. So I would give the edge to Show here because maybe he's the more experienced player. You think? By I'd, what, I'd by what, I by what I we saw now? Honestly, though, I expect Joe to win, like, from the start, no matter what. Because he is the favorite going into this. He is uh, more experienced than Kungen, for sure. He practiced a lot for this, and he is coming uh, with the momentum from this tournament win. So he is, right now, looking to steamroll Kungen. Well, the thing is, it's Hearthstone, so RNGesus is always involved. 
So you can never tell. There are no names that can beat pros any day. You also know that from qualification cups, from online tournaments. Uh, I've also seen you being eliminated in, in the first round. So it happens to pro players. Yeah, it happens for sure. And a Kungen, who is not even a no-name, and Kungen, who can have a good day, can have good draws, and definitely knows the game, is also always able to take out the show. But I have to agree. I totally have to agree. Show is, is the favorite here. Yeah, if anyone is good for an upset, though, it's definitely Kungen. So if, if we will see an upset, it's from him. So Kungen right now, I guess, I don't know, are the players already ready? If you were show now, in this situation, you have your Druid and your Warrior left. What would you play next? Against the Warlock, Hunter and Druid. You know, it doesn't actually matter that much often. For example, my, my teammate Strafker, for example, uh, likes to just roll dice. Okay. To choose his class for conquest. Because it doesn't actually matter that much. It's most likely random anyway. Um, sometimes there are some mind games involved, but... Uh, Usually, you just cannot predict. But there we go. This is a favorable matchup here for Kungen on the Druid going up against Sho on the Warrior. And yeah, in general, in general, it should favor the Druid. We saw on the A stream, though, um, in the matchup between uh, Thais and Ignite, that Ignite actually was able to, uh, yeah, just handily defeat the Druid from Thais um, with the Warrior just by having the board presence necessary to uh, deal with those mid-game minions that a druid can put out and then just take the game from there. So this is what it all will come down to. Kungen goes for the turn one in rage, Shade of Naxxramas. He has a turn to follow up with the Wild Grove. Yeah, Could've... but Kungen's hand seems really poor. He doesn't have any sort of minions to uh, back up that Wild Grove yet, but obviously he might just draw to them. Wow, and Inner he draws a second Innervate, so if we now yeah. see an Ancient of Lore being drawn in within the next turns, well, that is going to be very crucial here for, for Kungen. Innervate, not the card Kungen wanted to see, but if he draws into a 7-drop, that's going to be really good. Shao, on the other hand, is playing double armor smith here. Putting some minions on the board. Oh, wow! That counts. I called it. Ancient yeah. of Lore. There it is. Exactly the card that Kung needed. He needed that Dr. Boom or Ancient of Lore right now. And he got it. Refilling his hand. Maybe he draws a 5-drop. That would be very nice for him. Setting up the next turn already. But he gets a swipe and the Keeper of the Grove. Yeah, Kogan very smart, leaving the shade in hiding because it's like one of the most annoying things to deal with for the warrior. The only thing to really um, enable to, a kill on the shade of next is a brawl, and that might not, and that might even backfire sometimes. Exactly, and, and that early shade is growing and sitting there and waiting until those two savage roars come off. Unfortunately, with both innervates out, uh, a big combo is is not possible anymore. We have seen some crazy stuff like that yesterday. But still, Double Savage Roar is pretty nice lining up here in Kungen's hand with with probably a Force of Nature coming in and then that's gonna be a lot of damage in combination with that growing Shade of Naxxramas. And there he goes, even top decks the Azure Drake here on turn 5. A very nice draw for Kungen, refilling his hand even more, getting some spell power on the board, getting a nice 4-4 body. Show on the other hand, he just has the Fiery War Axe, he does not have the Death Spite here to take out that Azure Drake. So definitely a very nice play. What else could you do this turn? You do have a swipe available, well, uh, it doesn't look nice to me yeah. though yeah. keeper of the grove the perfect play is the azure drag i the would azure, say yeah the azure drag is just most solid play it uh fits the curve well you full, you use up all your mana crystals for the turn you get more options through the card draw and it puts an annoying minion on the board that um, the warrior has to deal with first now exactly. Kungen for some reason chooses to actually get rid of the armor smith. Not sure if that was a smart choice. I, I, I thought the game plan in general would be like keep the shade in hiding for as long as possible. But uh, that, oft, uh, that sometimes also can backfire. For example, if your opponent just, of course, has the brawl. Or um, if your opponent, even worse, sometimes uh, if your opponent has Sylvanas. Sylvanas 
um, can steal some can so, can often enough steal um, stealth shades, which is really exactly exactly. At some point, you have right. to think about how can I get some value out of the shed of next Ramos, or is it just taken away? And that's why Kungen went for it, took out that armor smith, and Joe, on the other hand, is now playing another fiery war axe, armoring up, and then ending his turn. So now again, it's Kungen's turn, and he draws into a pilot a shredder, and well, with the fiery war axe here. Um, doesn't seem too nice to play the Shredder because it gets taken out immediately. So I expect the Druid of the Claw uh, in taunt mode. In taunt mode? That's interesting actually. Because um, you could have actually applied a lot of pressure with the Druid of the Claw in charge mode as well. The fireworks obviously not enough to uh, kill it outright. So um, Kungen just kind of passing up on some damage here I would say. And I, I honestly think that uh, charging up the Druid would have been better, considering that you want to go aggressive with this double Savage Roar. Just uh, get him as slow as possible, as soon as possible. Exactly. Oftentimes that works out to just put all the pressure you got against the Warrior, playing a very fast game as a Druid, going in some kind of race. Uh, but Kungen decides to go for the two extra HP here, and will probably take out that Sylvanas. Yeah, Sylvanas uh, has been dealt with properly thanks to the silence um, that Kongen still had in his hand. And uh, yeah, once again, Sho has to find something to get back on the board, uh, but it seems like Shield Maiden and uh, potentially even Shield Slam might be able to deal with this. Although I, I wouldn't I use think, the Shield yeah. Slam here for Keeper of the Grove. That's not a big threat on the board. It's definitely not necessary, that's for sure. But, I mean, the, th the Keeper of the Grove is threatened to get killed by the Shield Maiden anyway. So now the Shield Slam, saving up the Shield Slam is obviously really good for Sho because Emperor Thorson hits the board and Sho will have exactly... Oh no, never mind, he will have one armor less. Uh, one armor, not, not enough armor, but with the weapon he definitely can kill that. Oh, and move. he gets another shield man. That's a very nice draw because oh now God. that shield slam is really come crushing down on the Emperor Thorus, and then you can take out the Keeper of the Grove, but the damage has been dealt by the Emperor Thorus, and he was reducing a lot of hand cards. Actually, it was Kungen had five cards in his hand and can now play a lot of them. Yeah, now he can go for the Force of Nature double savage draw combo even without the Innervate that he already used. So Exactly. Uh, that is um, just one of the... One of the awesome things that Emperor Thorson does in Hearthstone, just enable combos that were otherwise not possible. And now he can this turn even go for Wrath, take out that shield name and maybe go for Piloted Shredder Sludge Belcher if you want to, even though that Sludge Belcher is traded away so easily, so you're just, well, gifting that unit to your opponent. Yeah, the problem that uh, Kungan is facing right now is really that Show is very far ahead on the board, especially once that uh, turn 9 is Sarah comes down for him and the the cards that he has in his hand uh, does, don't threaten the board as much unfortunately he, and the Sarah will just generate so much advantage and eventually with all the armor gained from the hero power um, Cho will just get out of range of any kind of burst that Kung can put out no matter how much it is and that Sarah is gonna be very well bad to deal with for Kungen because he has already played one keeper of the grove he's still got 15 cards in his deck so Drawing into the second Keeper of the Grove does not seem too likely. And there's definitely gonna be some damage dealt by Isera. If he can get two or three cards out of Isera, wow, that's crazy. Even if even if Sho get, uh, even if uh, Sho's Isera gets silenced, uh, <laughs> there's still a 412 body to deal with. Oh, but this Sylvanas... That's exactly can, what you need here. This Sylvanas can actually uh, potentially steal with, potentially, with the potential of stealing the Isera, that might actually completely turn the game around for Kungen. However, we do see the Dream card uh, no dream in Sho's hand. That can easily deal with the Sylvan for one turn. Exactly, so the Dream paying off here. That's the perfect card last turn. And there's an Alexstrasza wow. as well. Double Dragon. Back to back, that's sick. Well, I expected the dragons to become popular after Black Rock Mountain, but as it looks, we do have some dragon power already here for show. And there he goes, the dream on the Sylvanas. It gets back to the hand, and then Isera swings to the face. Yeah, and all of a sudden, Kungen already in a spot where he could wow, die. Wow, and he gets Isera awakens. So that's probably. Oh, but the force of nature, double savage combo right now. 
It's so let's calculate. It's, How much damage it's is 22 this? 22 damage uh, by itself, and uh, with the additional 5, it's 27. So it's actually 2, two damage of lethal. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. You, so you could still go for it, because next turn we have seen two shield maidens being played. You could still go for it because you have to swipe following up that turn, and if you leave your opponent on two, the warrior can use his hero ability, and you're also playing around Isara Awakens, because if Sho would use that, it would be a draw. This is so devastating for Kungen right now. He, This is this is the card he needed to actually threaten lethal, but there's too much armor has been gained for Sho, and now he needs to use the combo to just clear minions. Otherwise, he's just dead. No, he wouldn't die to the board. You could also swing to the face and set up lethal yourself. And there's a high chance that you survive the next turn. We have seen two fiery roar exits being played, but well, he goes for the board clear. He takes out the How board. How do you survive a board like that? You survive that? Oh. 12 damage was just represented on the board, and the Sarah Awakens deals damage to all characters. That's why it would have been a draw if he went oh, to the that's face. that's what you mean, yeah. But there's also still stuff like Nightmare that can potentially... Yeah, so Isera has a chance of giving yeah. you Nightmare, Dream, one of those two minions, or Isera Awakens. So that's what you have to consider. But anyway, Kungun was playing around it, but like that, he was losing some kind of win condition here. So how is he going to win that? Anyway, the Despite was drawn, so it was good that he played it out. Otherwise, he had lost. So, it paid off here. But you know, at some points you have to take risks. Yeah, that is true. Because uh, if he didn't go for that, uh, like, I, I, I guess I agree with you. Uh, he had to, uh, to go for foil phase um, in order to win. Because now it will take a long time until Kung is actually able to deal any sort of people. That's the point because you can survive as long as you want to, uh, as long as you want to. But if you can't set up the victory for yourself, you're never gonna win, obviously. So Isera draws another card. It's just a laughing sister, not having too much of an impact to the game here. I wonder why Kungen actually didn't decide to go for both Savitros and just clear both minions. Isera keeping Isera on the board just doesn't do Kungen any favors. So. Exactly. You should have know. done either go full face or full board clear. What he did now is is not feeling too good. Yeah, this uh, this will definitely spell disaster for. Kuhn. And that's 13 damage represented here by Show, as I calculated. So he could go for lethal damage. Does he go for BM? Looks like it. Um, or is he just not seeing it? No, yeah, he sees he, it now. He goes for BM. <laughs> Actually, I was a bit afraid that he missed it, but it's perfect lethal. Isera awakens, dealing 5 damage to everything except Isera. And even though, in the end, Kungen gets that Isera, he's still dead. And Sho wins. And that's the 2-0 here for Sho. And Sho down to his last deck. He only needs to win one more with his... Uh, Druid. Druid. He gets a Druid left and Druid against uh, three different decks. Uh, the Druid is nearly guaranteed to win one of those matches. Uh, one of those games. Nearly guaranteed, but uh, it's not necessarily guaranteed. We seen Druid. I was talking to Nimsh about it yesterday. The Druid has a very high chance against nearly every deck, so the Druid does not have. Well, the Druid has a good win rate, a good matchup against every deck, but it also can lose to every deck, and that's exactly what we might see here today again. Yeah, we've seen people getting like Tyus, for example, recently. He got just uh, he just got zero three by Ignite. And uh, Thais played Druid three times and it didn't work any, every time. So exactly it, that. it definitely can happen. And uh, considering uh, Kungen's lineup, actually, Hunter, Warlock, and Druid, right? So Druid Mirror is probably the most favorable matchup for a uh, show in general, I would say. Because it it's a like at least a 50 50. It depends on Show's Druid. If, and let's say let's say that they play the same deck. It's a 50-50, right? But uh, you can give the favor exactly. to Show because you think he's the better player, I guess. And uh, however, those other car uh, classes that uh, Kungen brought, Hunter and Warlock, I think Druid might have a hard time against that. Usually, Druid I think is um, decent against uh, Handlocks, for example. But against the Demon Lock that Kungen brings uh, with the with the implosions and the Bane of Doom, Druid can struggle very much about uh, against. It can the deck. struggle, but it can also put. 
the warlock in a bad spot so I, I would not say what would you say is the percentage on that game druid versus well let's say a combo druid versus demon lock uh the um the demon lock it all comes down to um how well the demon lock can establish his board early on because uh, druid has a very hard time to actually come back from an unfavorable board position yeah. So uh, once that is, um, once Warlock establishes board control, especially with cards like um, Nerubian Eck at Power of Overwhelming um, and Implosion, that will be very hard for Show to come back from. But we will exactly. see what Kungen actually brings. And it's the Druid Mirror first of... The Druid Mirror first. And you were giving the edge here to Show. I have to agree with that because he probably is a bit better than Kungen just by his experience. But we see, look at that. That's why I see the Hunter matchup not too good here for Kungen, because Sho is playing Harrison Jones and also the Earthen Ring Farseer with some heal up, some board presence on turn three. So I guess also going up against the Hunter is uh, should be pretty good here for Sho's Druid. Yeah, with the Harrison and the Farseer, he definitely got some tech cards in, which is also the reason why probably he didn't uh, ban the Hunter at all. He was more afraid of something like a Mech Mage, and rightfully so. Mech Mage uh, can wreck through it pretty hard. So exactly. It seems like, yeah, especially with double Fars here that we see right here, he should be very well suited up against that Hunter that Kungen will bring if he wins this. But there we go, Kungen at least top decks the Shade of Next Ramas on turn three, so he has something to play this turn. And show himself just goes for double Earthen Ring Farseer. Yeah. yeah, you don't need to heal up in that matchup too much. But as you already pointed out, Druid has a problem to come back from a uh, unfavorable board position. So you have to take out those Earthen Ring Farseers very early. That's why Kungen already uses a swipe here. Yeah, this uh, doesn't need to attack with the shade though, since he does have a good turn five play that can threaten to kill that. Um Fires here off very easily with the Sludge Badger or the Druid of the Claw or Lothab even. Exactly. So plenty of options for Kungen next turn. It seems like he wants to go for that uh, Sludge Badger. There we go. Still leaves the Shade in stealth mode. And on the other hand, a show could now go. Well, you want to take out that Sludge Badger. So probably you could draw a card with that Wrath. Take it out, trade it away. You could also use your hero ability. Harrison Jones is an option to establish a bigger board. And Joe goes for the Harrison Jones here. He's not flattened by, by the Sludge Belcher, and I agree to that. There's not too much pressure here by Kungen. Yeah, but that trade, that trade of Nextrums is ever growing, and with the combo in Kungen's hand already, um, it will eventually become a really big combo the more the shade grows. So Kungen definitely in a good spot here. Uh, it has a lot of good stuff to play as well on this turn. Either the low tap or the Druid of the Claw. You could also think about the Keeper of the Grove. The uh, question is, what? how does he deal with the uh, board um, that show has right now? Or does he even deal with it? Putting a second taunt up, I would agree to the Druid of the Claw in taunt mode. It's so annoying for, for Sho to deal with two taunts and also have the threat of the chain of next Ramas. Lothab is also nice because then Sho cannot use any spells and will also have to make some maybe unfavorable traits for him. Oh, and now Kungen chooses to attack with the shade and I like this play. He smells blood in the water and also um, it's, it will be hard for uh, Sho to actually get rid of this board without using any spells because Lothab just disables that. All he can do is play a keeper to interact with the board by using kind of spells. And uh, yeah, Kungen will definitely get another attack with the Chain in. And if we see an innervate now, this is already lethal. Yeah, that's true. But it's just a wild growth, so I expect it's gonna happen what Nimsh said. Uh, it's turn seven, Dr. Boom is green play Dr. Boom. <laughs> yeah, the Dr. Boom right now, obviously the no-brainer play. Uh, however, there's obviously some op other options to be considered as well. So let's yeah, see that 5-1 Harrison Jones is a bit annoying. You could take out Harry by 
by using a hero, hero ability and maybe taunt up with, with the Druid of the Claw or put on some more pressure by using it in, in cat form. You have 11 damage right now, and uh, if you Savage Roar plus a Keeper, that's an additional 8. So it's 19, it's actually four, uh, 5 yeah, five of Lethal right now for Kungen. Exactly, and then you would set up a Force of Nature hero ability next turn. But so Kungen right now has to consider how much he wants to commit to the face, how much he wants to trade minions. And this is kind of a safe play here, I think, to putting the Druid of the Claw in taunt mode, because he has the damage necessary uh, to deal lethal next turn. Wow, he even trades oh, into wow. that this Emperor of Thorison. Some, this is actually a very weird play there, using using the Shade here. Yeah, and the Shade of next Ramos probably gets taken out here by Show. I can't imagine how he leaves that on the board. Uh, probably we will see a Wrath take care of that, then draw another card and maybe run the Pilot of Treader into the Druid of the Claw and then take it, uh, take it out with the Keeper of the Grove. I mean, I guess it's a very safe play by Kungen here. Because um, 19, he will eventually like he will eventually get the damage in that's necessary to finish um, Show off with the combo. So he just wants to not die, I guess. Show is on, um, on the back foot anyway right now, so he needs to clear the, clear the board and uh, this will it will take a while for show to even come back on the board at all exactly and also with dr boom lining up in kungan's hand you have something else to put a lot of pressure on the board show on the other hand draws into an inner weight. doesn't really help him that much here i guess he could go for a druid of claw and keeper of the grove that's exactly what he's gonna do here i guess yeah i guess the inner weight was fine here yeah, Inner Raid is nice, you get another Taunt on the board. And somehow, yeah, he's delaying the game a bit with that. Yeah, the, the problem the Kung sees here though now is, he knows Emperor Thorsten has been played and some cards were made cheaper. The, the question is, which cards were those cards? Yeah. Is it, uh, does he have the combo already? How does he interact with the board right now? How much can he kill? How much can he ignore? That is an important question. Like, Dr. Boom would just set up a pretty easy lethal, prob most likely lethal, next turn. And, uh, with but, <laughs> yeah, Kungen, Kungen just really has to consider if he's, <laughs> if he might just might die here next turn. Also, if we calculate it through, uh, okay, you can't play both Force of Natures in combination with your board, that's too many minions. But you can get potential 8 damage by by those trains, no, you can't even play it with your mana. Your next turn is eight mana available for for show. Yeah, it's totally. It all comes down to the point. Does show draw into the combo? And does Kungen? Is there a way for him to play around the combo here? A good way to? Not really, I guess. He the most he can clear is one minion. Which he does, but even if, if Sho had the combo, he would have died, uh, Kungen would have died anyway. So I think actually I would have ignored, choose to ignore the uh, Druid of the Claw there. Ooh. Just silence it, I guess, maybe, to go for even more damage to the face with a low tap. Now we see an Ancient, uh, the Ancient of Lore is in the hand. It seems pretty good f to me this turn. You could also think about using it for heal to stay out of lethal range when combo comes in, if there is a trade like that but big game hunter not really affecting the board here because dr boom wasn't played yeah, it seems that one of the force of nature has have to be used here to clear the board without taking too much damage mm. yeah very nice way here show knows kungen had some of those cards for a very very long time already and uh, oh he lets the pilot of shredder stay on the board well it's hard to deal with it anyway right yeah but you could have taken it out but Whatever might pop out is still still represents no it actually Slum. doesn't represent lethal and yeah actually, yeah you're right actually like this is lethal this is not playing around the combo and Kungin punishes that and there comes the combo seven draw force of nature also an innervate that can be used for the shape shift but it wasn't really needed because already before it was twenty damage and show exactly has twenty damage so Kungin starting some kind of comeback here and now it's just a 2-1 for show yeah uh 
that, that certainly was not what we expected here, but uh, cards like Harrison Jones, um, unfortunately for show, do absolutely nothing in this kind of matchup. And Farseer, obviously not the best of cards either um, that you need in this mirror matchup. So uh, Kungen taking a victory here, despite show um, being so far in the head. Now show might actually struggle to close out the series. We will see well, how we it goes. Well, we pointed out because of the Earthen Ring Farseer, she's probably prepared against Hunter. So if but we how well will it perform actually against Hunter? You That's can, the you question. Can, you can take your deck against a certain class all you want. Uh, with a deck as powerful as uh, as Hunter, a uh, face Hunter especially, how uh, how likely is it that you actually... There's always the chance to lose with anti-aggro decks against aggro. I totally agree to that, but his chances got increased by having some more heal. So, I mean, the matchup is not too bad as it was before. But first of all, we see Kungen go with the Warlock, and he will now play against Sho's Druid again, because that's the only option for Sho left here. Yeah. And we will see how that works out. The power of Warming, definitely one of the more essential cards in this matchup, but he needs the minions to back it up as well. Uh, Nerubianek is really a really important card as well to have first, I would say. Doesn't have it though, oh. but we will see. There's a lot of draws that Kung can still have to uh, get the minions he needs to synergize with Power of Warming as well. Dark bombs are pretty nice to take care of those Earthen Ring Farseers. Yeah, that is true indeed, and this is kind of um, a downside to those Farseers right now. Usually, Dark Bomb is not that great in this matchup. It usually just hits a piloted uh, Shredder or stuff like that. But with the far series, he definitely has additional targets now. And there he goes. Uh, there he goes. He draws into the implosion and the Nerubian. Egg. You already pointed out those are key cards in that matchup. So, pretty nice here for Kungen. Yeah, for sure. And uh, now Kungen has the option of just establishing a Nerubian egg on the board right now, coining out the Dark Bomb if he wants to. But it seems like Kungen decides to go for a double Nerubian egg first. This sets up some pretty good future plays as well. If he, for example, draws into a Defender of Argus, he can uh, enable both his eggs, um, give, it, give him Taunt. That's pretty good too. Yeah, Shaw, on the other hand, draws into a Wild Grove, can just use his hero ability on turn 4. He does not have a Shredder available here. Yeah, right now, let's see what Kung is gonna do here. There's no reason to use power warming just yet. It uh, really is important to have it for bigger minions. That you can just draw out. another card and use your Dark Bomb. I guess that's that's the safest and best play here. Yeah, that's true. Um, it gives you more options as well. Exactly. Maybe you draw into Demon, into Morganus or Lord Jaraxxus. So you have something for the Void Caller if you want to play it in future turns. Also next turn, may maybe we see a combination of power overwhelming next turn if needed with the white collar. Maybe that, maybe that Harrison Jones come th comes down, so we might see a white collar and that power overwhelming, or if it, if not, maybe just a lower up. Uh, but we will see that first of all, Kungen goes for the card draw, draws into the abusive sergeant. Then we see the dark bomb come crashing down on the earthen ring Farsia, taking that out, and wow, there's an innervate here for show. Yeah, that innervate. Oh boy, uh, doesn't actually give doesn't g actually give um, show that kind of beautiful place that innovate enables. It's kind of a little bit of awkward play. Exactly. Uh, you, cannot, you don't really want to innovate out Doctor Boom, for example, because but you have one mana. But left that's over. Ha that Harrison Jones. That's also pretty nice now for Kung and just power overwhelming and white collar. That's a very nice way to deal with that. And he establishes a huge board like that, a 3-4, a 4-4, and still an Arubian egg left. Wow, that's a really nice play that I would love to see here. Or do you see another option? I think, well, this is really striking to me. I, I really love that play, so... There is obviously the option of just going for Implosion as well. Because um, no matter how much damage you deal, you can still finish off the um, Harrison with either Abusive Sergeant on the egg or Mortal Coil. Yeah, but I like establishing the board with the white color. And Kungen agrees to that. He also plays it like that. There's the Nerubian now. And I really love to see that board against the Druid. That's just dealing so much pressure. Show on the other hand, now counters with Dr. GG, Dr. Boom, entering the board here. Yeah, uh, Dr. Boom for Kungen as well. Unfortunately, he can't play it yet. So now what do you do? You have uh, enough damage to deal with the Bo Dr. Boom. Yeah, Unfortunately it's easy. for Kungen, there is no demon for uh, the Void Caller, so he might actually 
hold on to it for a little while longer. Maybe you want to use the mortal coil even in that turn to maybe draw into... He hits for three. That's, that's pretty decent. Now you can trade your Nerubian into that if you want to draw another card, maybe. Yeah, there's certainly a possibility to do that. Swipe would be pretty uh, pretty good here for for show. Even though you're risking to to get a void uh, to get a demon out of the void collar, uh, it's still a good board clear here. And as we know, Kungan doesn't have a demon, so if 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 show draws a swipe, that's gonna be really good. If we see the Nerubian trade into. The Dr. Boom, and there we go! Alright, so here we see a Mortal Coil. Oh yeah, he has to go for a Mortal Coil, because otherwise he was close to lethal range. Because he's just on 21 HP, it would have been exact 20 damage, so yeah. one of lethal. But it, it was definitely a lot of pressure, so taking out that bomb is, is very smart here. Yeah, he needed to do that, and th there was no reason to, like, go for life tip instead of mortal coil here taking damage to draw a card instead of like dealing with a minion to draw a card yeah well you would have kept the mortal coil so it's some kind of greed uh that comes with with that play but as we already pointed out it was crucial to to take that boom board off the board and now Show could think about innervating out and <laughs> he's touching the innervate. He's like, I want I want to, but okay, let me think about it. But finally he goes for that innervate and plays. Yeah, he's gonna silence the void caller. He's he really is afraid of that potential demon that can pop out like a Doomguard or a Malganis. I would be as well. We are already in turn eight here for the druid. Well, turn seven now for the warlock, and he has got a lot of cards in his hand, so you really don't want to allow him to get a Malganis. Especially because you do not have a big game hunter in your hand or anything nice to deal with such a big demon. Yeah, it's going to be hard for um, Kung to assess the situation here. Um, you have to consider. Um, you always have to like be afraid of the combo. And Kung, Kung just uh, is going to play like uh, Show has the combo at all times now. So he needs to clear the board um, so combo doesn't deal lethal damage um, and. So he either clears the board or he heals up to a certain amount where the board doesn't matter. And um, he definitely needs to get out of range of the combo. That's the top priority right there. The question always is, with this many options, how what's the best solution to um, get the best advantage out of the situation? To stay out of range. And I like this power warming play. It deals with the drake fairly well. You, you spawn in the Rubian as well. I like it too. You have to trade into the bomb first to absorb some damage and that's exactly what happens here. Then trade the drake away. You could even go for for Lothab or NTQ, but I would prefer Lothab here because it also establishes a nice board position and also delays the combo. Yeah, the Lothab, um, the Lothab doesn't... Uh, like the, co the combo would be uh, only used to clear the board actually uh, because obviously combo doesn't deal lethal here. But it seems like he's choosing to um, go for the low tap at the later stage of the game. Which I don't actually agree with. Uh, the s he, did, he didn't even need to heal up in that situation. But I guess he wants to put low tap on a board where um, you expect your opponent to definitely hmm. play some sort of spell, like a swipe. So, for example, if you go, if you have a board with a bunch of imps from the implosion, exactly. uh, then a follow-up low tap for that is pretty decent, I guess. Yeah. That is the point. And now this turn here for show. You could go for the board clear combo. You could also just go for a swipe, take out that Nerubian and play your own Root of the Claw, even though it gets taken out. Oh, okay. He plays it in. He puts on some pressure here. Yeah, mm. with the cards yeah. that shows still has the remaining in his hand, he needs to just hope that uh, Kungen neither has heal or um, taunt. And uh, we see neither of those in Kungen's hand. Dr. So Bium, Abusive Sergeant looks really really nice to me here. In a couple of turns, Kungen might actually die, depending on what, what's going to happen here. Because there's a lot of damage waiting in Cho's hand. There's um, at least 14 from one combo, then six, another yeah, just six imagine, from the Just nature. imagine another combo. Just imagine the second to draw. You would kill... Back-to-back -back combo. That could exactly. certainly spell disaster for Kungen. But first of all, he goes for Sylvanas 
Um, wow. And <laughs> he gets kind of rewarded because yeah. Joe draws the big game hunter yeah, here. Yeah, it is, it, is, it is a really heads up play there. Because uh, obviously Kungen knows there has been uh, those three cards have been sitting in uh, Show's hand for a long, long time. And uh, what Big Game Hunter is a card, for example, that tends to stay in the hand for a long time until that Dr. Boom hits the board. So he's really hesitant to play into that Big Game Hunter. Exactly. Sylvanas provides a much better advantage here. And now Show needs to clear that board with the first force of nature, but he still has the second one for the combo. So he's still in an okay spot, but. Okay, it's not really what the show needs. He needs like some really good uh, draws fairly soon. Totally, and there's the second heal bot, so Kungen can stay out of combo range for days. <laughs> and now plays the Doctor Boom. We will probably see uh, the big game hunter come down next turn. Pilot of Shredder being drawn. Swipe would also have been nice to take out the Boom bots and to take care of that abusive sergeant. But like that is also decent. Get something on the board. Pilot of Shredder and big game hunter. That's nice. Yeah, dealing with the abusive sergeant too, so the abusive sergeant doesn't have um, the big game hunter to attack into. But the bane of doom also can deal some damage to the big game hunter and spawn a demon. Which kind of demon will we see? That is the big question here. It's gonna, done. It's gonna be a wow! Wow, you're right. <laughs> I called it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Bane of Doom, also known as the best Stormpike Commando ever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you could go for the implosion here. I would love to see it. Because we have already seen one swipe. And Sho has 16 cards left in the deck. That's very decent. And dealing 3 damage as well. Perfect. Yeah, perfect here. And wow. <laughs> the lower walker Sho actually being a detriment to Sho here. Because the only way for Sho to clear this board is like... Perfect scenario, obviously a swipe, but do you want to give a swipe to your opponent? Not really. Yeah, this is a very awkward situation now here for show. You can just take out that, I don't even know what's called, the Flame of Azanoth. Yeah, Flames of Azanoth, right? <laughs> Takes it out. Yeah, I never played World of Warcraft. And goes for the heal, the Earthen Ring Far, so you're not having too much of an impact here on the on the game. Yeah, and Cho now facing down a lot of damage here. Is it even lethal? Is it's, it's 12 on the board, plus uh, 2 from Argus, 2 from Argus, and 3 from Dark Bomb, so 12 plus 7. That is lethal. Exactly. The question, as always, is does he see that? I'm pretty sure he's just counting down the damage here, and I will. I'm fairly sure he will see it. You also have two defenders of Argus, so it's... Oh, he doesn't, but he gets... Ah! Uh. What? Why? Oh, boy. Oh. Kungen didn't see it. He missed lethal. Wait a second. No, never mind. Uh, we're stupid. Uh, I'm stupid. He didn't have the... Bo uh, the he had a... Uh, his board was too full. Yeah, but you could have traded the bombs away just after that and then attacked. Because the first bomb trading, then play Defender of Argus, spawning a Flame of Azanoth, and then like that? Uh, yeah, yeah, now uh, the board was too full for the Defenders still. Like, you couldn't play both Defenders there, unfortunately. I guess. Yeah, yeah it wasn't lethal. I must save Never mind. You could, have play, you could have played both Defenders. You could have played the both Defenders. But if you, you trade the first bomb, trade the first bomb away. Play one Defender of Argus, then nothing spawns by Illidan. Trade the second bomb away, play the second Defender of Argus, and that's lethal. Because then you attack... It's only lethal if, you, if the bombs guaranteed hit the face. The first bomb hit for one. So we have then seven damage coming in from, from Illidan. We have three imps still available. So that's already 11 damage. Then another four damage from the Defenders of Argus and the Dark Bomb. That's another three. So we have 11 here. Plus seven. Wow, one damage of lethal. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> one damage of lethal, really? Never mind. It all, it all comes down to this now. The matchup that we were anticipating. Uh, Drew but he had four imps. He had four imps. He had four imps on the board. So it, wa it was lethal. It was perfect lethal. Dude, I just told... No. It was three imps. It was... It, it was... How was the board then full? Because you had... Never mind, it's in the past <laughs> now, who cares? <laughs> yes. Just look forward to the next game. And You're this right, is, uh, it's 2-2 it's now. This is the matchup I'm really looking forward to because Show Tech, this uh, Druid, to specifically uh, have a better matchup against Hunter. This is why he didn't ban the Hunter. 
and now we will see if Sho gets rewarded for the choices he made in the terms of deck building, adding that Harrison Jones and adding those two Farseers to the deck. Let's see if uh, Kungen's start will actually be decent enough to totally get out of control here and uh, not leave the Druid a chance to make a comeback. Exactly, and the Druid does not have a nice start here, just with the Innervate, Savage Roar, uh, Druid of the Claw Scenarius. It's not really what you want. Kungen, on the other hand, he has Animal Companion, Eagle Horn Bow, that's something nice in combination with the coin. So he decides to use the Shapeshift to take out that Leper Gnome, but I'm pretty sure we are about to see an Animal Companion come down. Yeah, most certainly it will be the Animal Companion. Wow, it's very there's hard. also a second Animal Companion being drawn. Are we going to get a random Huffer? A random Huffer? Yeah, because Animal Companion always that is Huffer. That is a random Huffer. That is a reverse Huffer right there. Yeah, unfortunately it's a Leok here for Kungen. And the Innervate Druid of the Claw will be able to clean that up very nicely. Double Abusive Sergeant. Well, like that you could get rid of, of the Druid of the Claw, but you are losing a lot of damage here. Hmm. Yeah, but uh, it seems like this is what Kungen actually has to do here, because the Druid of the Claw will just pose too much of a problem. Exactly, you can't allow that to get out of, uh, out of control, and even though it does not really feel right, Kungen buffs up his Leok and swings it into the Druid of the Claw. Both minions die. And now it's Sho's turn. You can go for the Keeper of the Grove, kill one of the abusive sergeants, uh, get a minion on the board for yourself. Yeah, the Keeper of the Grove generates a very good board presence for Sho here. Uh, but unfortunately, it will take a while until Sho can play that scenario to get some additional taunts on the board. Now, which please, are really no Leok. Important. Wow, he gets a Leok again? Really? Misha or Hoffa would have been so much better. Yeah, but that's just how it goes with Animal Companion. Sometimes you just don't get Hoffa. Yeah, Shaw on the other hand goes for his uh, Savage Roar and will then probably follow that up with his Wild Growth to set up an earlier scenarios coming down with maybe two taunts. Yeah, and also Farseer, such a clutch card to have in this matchup. Just denying at least one uh, of those chargers, basically. Exactly, and there we see one of those charges, a wolf rider coming in, probably swinging to the face. There we go, and dealing three damage to show. Gets traded away here by the damaged Keeper of the Grove, and then we see a big game hunter for establishing some board pre uh, presence. So but now what do we see here? I Eagle would go Horn for bow. Eagle Horn Bow Explosive Trap. You kill the, the big game hunter. You can swing to the face or take out the Earth Ring Farseer if you feel threatened by that. But yeah, I would swing to the face, then just play the Explosive Trap, get another charge. I feel like the Mad Scientist is just a bit slow, uh, too slow. Yeah, however, what we can see now is that the Harrison will generate a lot of value. Drawing exactly. two cards. There we go, Harrison Jones comes on the board. And all of a sudden, Kugan, very precarious situation here. Uh, he really needs a lot of damage still to kill off Show, because Show now slowly turning the game around, especially once that scenario hits the board. Uh, it will be very hard for Kugan to actually uh, charge through those taunters. Exactly, and you don't even want to play that knife dragger here, really, because it gets taken out so easily. So Kungen opts for the mad scientist, uses his steady shot to the face, and just hangs into the game. Wow, a violet teacher! Very interesting here. A token druid, maybe, by by show. It's just a very solid minion in general for uh, for Druid. We've seen Valid Teacher going in and out of Druids. Um, and even without the token strategy, Valid Teacher is a very solid minion overall. It uh, challenges Pilot the Treader very nicely as well. Yeah. I totally agree to that. Now, the question is, do you want to play Scenarius this turn? I would say so. Hmm. You could also think about... Adding some pressure, you could buff the minions and just add some more damage. 
instead of going for the taunts? I feel like you kind of want to uh, po uh, pop the trap, like attack the attack the scientist with the farseer and then pop the trap with the um, Harrison, so that um, the trends are not affected by the trap. Exactly, but. Yeah, he goes for the transfers, does not take out that that mad scientist and does not pop the explosive trap. Oh, just imagine just imagine a knife juggler here. I mean, uh, the knife, knife juggler, juggler unleash. unleash. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That That's the thing why I would not like to play scenarios with the treants. But anyway, Kungen just draws into the haunted creeper, so no that unleash the hounds available here. That is not what he needed here. Wow. Show actually looking to win this game. Yeah, he prepared exactly for that matchup. He was preparing his druid for for Hunter. Yeah, it worked out perfectly. Going to the face with that kill command. Trying to deal as much damage as possible. Getting the second explosive trap right away now. And uh, in theory, there is no lethal for... Um, show but uh, well, we it's know lethal, right? yeah, like from Kungen's perspective yeah but, uh, theory, from, but, but show, we know that show has the force of nature plus hero power that will enable exact lethal right now totally so show closing that series out it was close in the end so Kungen had a very nice comeback and in the end show still manages to take the three to victory here over Kungen and will advance to the winner's match of that group. Yeah, Kungen put up a great fight, almost making a comeback against uh, Show's Druid. As we have seen, Druid certainly is able to lose three in a row, but uh, Show proving that he can still do it. And Exactly, that's it. And just so winning the series. I say thank you, Ikop, for joining me, casting that game, and that leaves us again with a short break, and then we will be right back with the, with the winner's match of that group. So, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned and see you after the break.